Hi, I'm Gary Parker. Welcome back to Contractor Corner. Alongside Jerry Murphy again, we are still talking about ACVs. Today we're going to be doing troubleshooting and effectively finding out if there is a potential problem with this thing, how we diagnose it, how we fix it, so that the building can be open and free and doing what it's supposed to do best, and then the contractor can come in and get off the job quickly. All right, well, thanks, Gary. Well, yep. first thing, they get a call, and they're going to tell you what's not working. Okay. Right? So what's wrong? I don't have any flow. I have little flow. I have high pressure, low pressure. Could so be anything. Could be whatever the complaint is. Yep. You want to find out what's not working. So you're in diagnosis mode. At this exactly. Point. Okay. So now that you know what they're seeing, what we want to do is simulate uh, and use a process of elimination to figure out what's wrong and where. So as a reminder, yep. as the water's coming from upstream to downstream, 100 PSI, it is going through these tubes and splitting and going downstream and then onto the top. So when you flood the top, you're going to go ahead and close the valve. Mm -hmm. When you remove the water, the valve's going to go straight down. Yep. So I'm going to simulate that by uh, closing my downstream valve. So now it cannot escape from the cap, and that water is still coming up to the top. Mm -hmm. I should have no flow at all, so that no pressure downstream. You're simulating a, da uh, a completely closed shut downward pressure. Yep. Should have nothing coming out. Nothing at all. So let's say that works. Yep. We so know there's no problem there. So conversely, I now will open that, and I'm going to close the upstream. So now no water can come to the cap and all the water can drain down. Okay. That so it should be running full. fully open. Okay. Yep. So we got into that bridge mm -hmm. and it's working that way. It's working. Okay, what else could be the problem? Well, now I know that the main valve is okay. Yep. There's nothing wrong with the functioning of that main valve. So I'm gonna reopen both sides. Mm -hmm. Now I look around and I say, hmm, this thing here, we didn't discuss last time, but it's called a Y strainer. Yep. And it's basically keeping uh, rocks and sticks from coming into the, the valve itself. So on a job site or just in the life of the building, you get a chunks yep. of concrete, rocks, debris, all stuck in there. Exactly right. So let's say you go in there and you clean it out. It looks okay. Maybe there's a little bit of dirt in there, but yep. nothing too crazy. Right. What could be the problem if that's not the problem? Okay. Well, checking the strainer is a good and very simple thing to do. Yep. You see it on a suction side of a pump. Same, same yep. type of strainer. So that could fix the problem if there was one. That problem might just go away right there. Okay. So let's say that's not it. So we know the main valve is working, the uh, strainer is not clogged. Mm -hmm. So now we come and we look at the pilot valve because there's really two valves. If you remember, the pilot is the brains. Mm -hmm. This is set at a 60 PSI downstream pressure. It's what tell is telling the valve to open or close. That's the governor. Yeah. Right. So it. if this is all working and there's no clogged strainer, I may have a bad pilot valve. Gotcha. Which, as you recall, is a direct acting valve. Okay. So these can be rebuilt, repaired, or just replaced that will often solve the problem. Okay. What could be another scenario where all of those things are working fine, mm -hmm. but let's say this valve doesn't have a bypass, what could be the problem? Great point, Gary. So let's say this doesn't exist over here. And if you remember from our last session, this is for low uh, middle of the night usage yep. for water. Normally this valve's cranking, you know, 150 to 250 gallons a minute, but at night it's zero to maybe 30. It's uh, flushometers, it's showers, maybe some toilets. And this bypass valve allows higher pressure, but low flow bypass. Um, and the complaint might have been, this valve is really loud. So it's chattering. It's chattering, it's yeah. screaming, what's going on? You come in and you don't see the a bypass, bypass out there. Yep. And it's often in a commercial space, in a building. One of the most common complaints we have is the valve is loud. You come in and you realize there's no bypass, we contract to put on the LF223 bypass system, problem goes away. So a contractor arrives on the job site, he, he works through the entire process, yeah. there's no bypass, he asks the customer, when's this chattering happen? Probably yeah. more often than not at night yeah. or low peak hours. Yeah. He suggests putting on a bypass one. I agree, that's exactly right. And more, more times than not, they do that, it eliminates the problem. Well, what's nice is we can go upstream and turn back the clock. Mm -hmm. When you're first sizing this and you know it's in a commercial space, you know your normal pressures and your normal sure, usage or sure. demand, and you realize there's gonna be some short demand in the middle of the night, you design it and put in the bypass right up front. Gotcha. But you can't always do that. And you see this valve, you guys come out and you say, it's loud, that's a, it's a great solution. Thanks for walking us around it, Jerry. So whether we check the valve, the individual components, the strainer, or a bypass, we know how to solve this. Correct. Jerry, thanks for coming by again. Jerry, great to see yep. you. We'll see you next time on Contractor Corner. If you need any more information on ACVs, go to watts.com, call your rep, or call Jerry Murphy. Thanks.